Welcome to EuroPCR 2024. I'm Victoria Delgado from Barcelona, and I have the pleasure to be here with uh, Martin Leon from United States. Welcome. And we are going to be discussing about a topic uh, that we know already how to treat severe aortic stenosis. And we wait the patients uh, have symptoms or have some uh, reduction in uh, ventricular function, but actually we would like to treat perhaps patients earlier. So why are we moving more towards uh, aortic stenosis, uh, treating patients with asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis? What do you think that are the benefits of treating those patients earlier, Martin? This is a good question, <clears throat> and we've been struggling with this for years, because for every symptomatic severe AS patient, there's another one that's asymptomatic. And managing these patients has been very difficult for clinical cardiologists. First, we've all known that severe asymptomatic aortic stenosis, when you follow these patients longitudinally, their future is a little bit unpredictable. Second, there's a lot of confirmatory evidence looking at what we call cardiac damage mm -hmm. to be able to demonstrate that when we use symptoms as the trigger for treatment, these patients already, two-thirds of them, have significant cardiac damage that, by the way, does not reverse yep. even after you do the AVR and may be contributing to many of the non-responders. And third, there have already been some smaller surgical studies, one in Asia, one in Eastern Europe, indicating that the current treatment, which is surveillance versus early surgical AVR in these severe asymptomatic patients, especially those with critical aortic stenosis, that the clinical outcomes are very different, favoring early or what we call preemptive AVR. Indeed, those trials were the recovery trial and the avatar. Yes. And actually, they were kind of a little bit different, but moving more towards those early uh, uh, treatment, because in the recovery were more critical, perhaps, yep. uh, severe aortic stenosis. The avatar, they included even patients that were tested the symptoms with exercise, right. which is a key question, how to include those patients in trials, what can we do, and how to detect them uh, early, and perhaps with a much better hemodynamics still of the valve, but still severe aortic stenosis. And for the future, what do you think that will be the trials coming? What, what do we know? What are the trials ongoing now? Well, what's held us back is a few things. First, those studies are very interesting. I would call them exploratory. They were very underpowered, but they were interesting and important studies, and they looked at good endpoints. Um, but what we really need, now that we know we have a therapy for aortic stenosis, where the patient can have a procedure with very low risk and leave the hospital the next day, the threshold for treating earlier in a pre-symptomatic state is very, very different. So there have been a series of clinical trials that have been developed over the past five, six, seven years that are exploring this very issue. And we're at the point in time now where we're finally going to be getting some serious data on these three studies. The first is called early TAVR. And this is severe exercise test confirmed asymptomatic aortic stenosis randomized between TAVR and clinical surveillance with a two-year primary endpoint outcome, but the median follow-up is almost four years. Mm. These data for this pivotal clinical trial in almost 1,000 patients will be presented at TCT in the fall. Whoa. In addition, there's a terrific study from the UK. Mark Dweck is the principal investigator called Evolved, mm -hmm. which is biomarker and imaging driven, which means more at risk severe asymptomatic aortic stenosis. And again, randomized between clinical surveillance versus earlier AVR, mostly TAVR. That's about a 300 patient trial. That will also be presented, we believe, at TCT. And finally, the first study in moderate aortic stenosis with reduced ejection fraction, and this is Nick Van Meegen's, the main PI of this study, also has concluded enrollment. And this will be a fascinating study the first time of treating moderate aortic stenosis in patients that don't have significant symptoms um, and comparing what is the normal course of medical therapy versus premature or preemptive um, AVR. So we will finally have data. And I think when we have clinical evidence, we can start thinking about how we might be able to broaden the indications, maybe even change the guidelines of how to manage this difficult 
patient group with asymptomatic aortic stenosis? Indeed, those uh, trials will be impact, impacting in recommendations that currently are 2A recommendation. So these are the ones that we want to move the needle towards class one is recommended or eventually remain in the same area. But uh, we are really looking forward for the results of those trials because we'll be impacting on those recommendations. And you brought up the topic of the moderate aortic stenosis. That's another one. Another one. As well, consider whenever the patient needs revascularization perhaps on another, on another procedure. And right now with uh, the TAVI technology, that's, that may change as well. Yeah, I think this is a very exciting time. Um, and I think that without clinical evidence, it's hard to make the kinds of decisions that we're talking about. But now we'll have evidence. And whatever the evidence shows will certainly point us in the right directions. So maybe we can adjust the guidelines. Maybe we can change the trigger point for when we intercede in certainly the severe asymptomatic AS patients. So this is a fascinating uh, wall. Yes. I think that we have been uh, uh, witnessing the development of uh, the treatment of our severe aortic stenosis with the TAVI for now 20 years. And now it comes to patients even asymptomatic, much earlier treatment. Looking forward very much for the results of those trials and how this will be implemented in clinical practice. And if you want to know more about how to treat patients with severe aortic stenosis, stay with us, stay tuned, and we will give you the evidence. Thank you so much, Martin, for your time and for discussing with us about this specific topic. Thank you. Thank you.